Hey guys, thanks for coming back on my continuing programming featurette, uh, featuring all the different applications and programs that I've written. So this one is, uh, as I mentioned before, going to be a kind of rehashing or a rebuilding of the generate random generate ID uh, C sharp program that I wrote and did a video of a little bit ago. Uh, so just a reminder of what that one was. Uh, is this generated a random ID. Uh, into a hash table and store or generate a random ID that is used as a key in a hash table to store just a random collection of things. Uh, and so you can see here adding these things to the hash table and then printing those things prints each one of their IDs and then a random number that was generated along with that ID. Uh, now the thing that I'm going to focus on in this video though is getting rid of this gross uh, console style menu where you have to type in numbers. It seems to be a feature of a lot of uh, programming classes too, where they say like, well, we'll just generate a while loop with a uh, number menu like this. And I always make it a point, and, I, and maybe I'm just an overachiever. I always make it a point to redo this style menu into something a little bit more interactive, a little bit, uh, in my opinion, better. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that real quick today using a C sharp utility program that I've also included on my, uh, public GitHub online. Uh, it is called the menu class or just a menu builder or whatever you want to call it over here. Uh, so what I've done is I've opened up a couple things in here in the menu builder so you can kind of see what that one looks like. So I will just run that real quick and you can kind of see what it's going to do. Uh, so I, it generates, and this is, it looks bad right now because um, the console, I, I made it blue so you can see it easier in the video, uh, but th this background can be changed to whatever you want. And I'll show you that in a little bit, but essentially what it is is just a uh, user interactive menu that allows you to just kind of scroll through with the arrow keys and select options with the uh, enter key. And then that's it. So kind of cool, I thought. Um, and it, there's a lot of options in it. So I'm going to stick with those uh, options that you just saw in a second or a second ago. But um, we're going to add that to this program here so you can kind of get an idea of how I would add it or how you would add it to your own program uh, if you desired or wanted to. Uh, so anyways, here on the left hand side is going to be the uh, generate ID program. And I'll just queue that up for when we're ready to build it. And then over here on the right-hand side is the Menu Builder program, uh, kind of showcasing all of the different ways that you can use this. And I'm just going to stick with all of these options right here. I'm just going to modify what I've got over on this left-hand side. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to keep all this stuff obviously the same. Uh, but one of the first things that I want to do here is I want to create the uh, actual menu itself. So instead of this whole console.write line thing, I'm going to create a string and I'm just going to call it menu options. And then I'm going to, in that menu options string, I'm going to put all of these options that I have here. Uh, now I'm going to get rid of obviously some of the things, but I'm just going to, to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to just copy and paste it. Uh, so first, I don't want these to be pluses. I want them to be commas. And I don't know why. I think it's ReSharper that does that. It just decides to turn my pluses into commas, but then gets rid of the... There we go. Ooh, that, that works much better. All right. And then we'll come over here, make sure we've got... Yep, we'll get rid of this one. Okay, and we'll get rid of these... Uh, enter characters because I don't need those anymore and one more comma to add in and one more enter character okay perfect all right so now I can get rid of this because there's no need for it all right so I've got my string of menu options uh, okay so now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create a new menu so I'm just going to make a bar new menu and I'm going to make that into a menu option or object and then I'm going to pass in the menu options that I just created and I'm going to make it a one by one menu. Uh, there are options uh, in there. I, I don't know if I've actually built in this functionality here yet uh, but it is going to be a this will be just a one by one menu to start off with for right now. Um, <clears throat> then we're going to say new menu and we're going to modify that menu centered. Now, in this case, I've actually modified the menu class here. It doesn't have to take in the menu options. It's not 
not necessary. And I'll explain why in just a second. And then we're going to say new menu and we're going to say center to console because we want it to be centered. And then we're going to new menu, oops, new menu, and we're going to reset the cursor to be not visible. So what that does is it'll turn off the cursor so it doesn't show up because otherwise it's all blinky and weird. Uh, when you're looking at the menu. And I'm going to separate these out so it's a little bit easier to read. Uh, it doesn't look all crazy and squished together. All right, so now I'm good here. I can get rid of this, this var selection equals console.readline. Um, <clears throat> that's not going to be necessary. I don't need this either because I am not going to be parsing anything at all. I'm just going to be simply using this switch statement. Now, that's the beautiful thing about this uh, menu style here is that um, the menu itself can be inserted into any type of just generic console menu essentially uh, and that's it so you don't have to do anything really special just other than uh, making sure that your switch statement still uses the same variable and everything else uh, so in this case my switch statement is going to be um let's see my options are going to be oh i should take these numbers out too i don't really need them so create a table is going to be the first option option one Add a thing will be option two. Print all will be option three. Um, does this delete the table? Destroy the table will be option four. And then we'll just make option five be exit the program. Okay, so as long as this is an option five, then it'll be exit. And then down here, one, two, three, four, everything else is good. And then that should be pretty much it. Uh, so let's go ahead and run it and see if that actually worked. I'd be pretty embarrassed if it doesn't, but oh yeah, it doesn't look like it's working for some reason, so that's great. Uh, oh, I almost forgot, I have to actually make the menu. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be down over here. Uh, we're gonna say uh, selection cell in this case equals new menu dot run menu there we go and that should oh wait hold on a second i want to put that there put that there all right and that should be there you go cool create a table table created successfully add a thing add another thing add another thing and then print all the things there they are perfect destroy the table table cleared print all the things table has no entry all right, so add a thing, add a thing, add a thing, add a thing. Print all of them. There you go. Perfect. And then exit. Awesome. So that's it. That's really all it took was just adding in those couple commands there after you build the uh, menu itself. So anyways, um, I want to take a look at kind of uh, what this menu thing does. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail just because it is very... I don't want to say complicated, but kind of. So I got the idea from another YouTuber. I can't remember his name, but I'll try and post a link uh, in the description down below. Um, it was really cool. It, he, was, he was super informative. Uh, he was kind of showing how to do um, uh, a, a menu for a video, like a, a, a console game style uh, application. Uh, and it was kind of the, basically the same thing, where it's like you can scroll through it and all that. But there were a couple things in there that I wasn't a huge fan of. Uh, so, I, And again, not saying like he did a bad job, because I think he did an amazing job. Uh, it basically gave me the, stump, the starting off point, and then I just took it a couple steps further. Uh, so one thing that uh, his menu did was, as it went through the selections here that you can see, what it did was it redrew the entire um, console. So it drew it redrew the whole thing. So if you went up from uh, number four to number three, it erased this whole thing and then redrew it. And now with this highlighted instead. So essentially what it was, was as you would select with your arrows moving up and down, it would change the picture entirely. And I wasn't a huge fan of that because it caused this kind of weird flashy uh, effect and it, it, it kind of bugged me a little bit. So I wanted to try and fix that. And that was actually the main uh, thing that I did it, it, that's different from his menu and mine is that I removed that, that need for that flashy effect. And so I did that here uh, in this section where it is, let's see, um, can't remember exactly where it was. I, oh, down here in the run menu. So essentially what this does is it actually tries to calculate where you are going to be going. Oh, here in the draw menu, that's it. It tries to uh, calculate where you're going to be going and it determines if you're going up, then it's going to 
go to the menu, uh, the, the menu item that's above it, and it's going to redraw only that. And if you're going down, it's going to go to the menu item that's down below where you're at, and it's going to redraw only that. And then, of course, reset the menu item that you were just at. So it's only redrawing in the spot where you are going to and where you just were, instead of redrawing the whole thing. So if you have a, whole, a menu of like 10 things, and you're at number like five and you're going to number six, it's only going to redraw number five to reset what it was and number six to turn it into the new color. Um, additionally, I have these uh, options in here as well. You can set the colors. Uh, I know there is a, a, a menu, uh, like a, um, a method in here that allows you to do that. I think it's down here at the bottom if you take a look uh, or somewhere around here. I think you can uh, definitely change the color if you want to of the menu itself. You can check, you can set the text color and you can set the background color as well. And maybe it's just here. Maybe this is just what it is. Maybe I didn't actually put the method in. Uh, but if you want to, you can obviously change the colors uh, to each one of these things. So if I change this to blue, it might actually uh, not look so bad. Actually, I'm not sure if that's the, uh, the correct background. Oh yeah, there it is. Perfect. So that actually looks kind of, kind of cool like that with that light blue over, over the dark blue. But uh, anyways, you kind of get the idea. Uh, so that is um, essentially the, the main thing that I did in there. Uh, the rest of this, you can kind of take a look through it. Uh, there's a couple other options too, uh, like for instance, up here in the key presses thing, I know there's options for other keys to be pressed. I, I don't remember what any of them do or what they do in particular, but you can take a look at that, or at least I, I think that's in here. Oh, this was another thing that I did. Uh, the menu modified center, uh, or the modify menu center, is uh, in the event that you want your menu to be centered, like it is here. So like, I, I, if you look back, the string that I put in, it's like, these things are just whatever. They're just whatever length they are, that's it. Uh, but when they printed the console, you can see that they have the appropriate amount of spaces on either side of them so that they're center justified. Uh, there's another option to make this not center justified too, left justified, I believe it's somewhere in here. Uh, but anyways, the, I, 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 that was another thing that I added in there. There it is, menu left justified. Uh, I added that in there so that you could uh, make the menu uh, to like basically uh, fit whatever thing you're doing. Uh, like for instance, I had a program in, in the past that I made it so that the main menu was centered, but then an offshoot menu was not centered. It was um, it was left justified. So I'll just show you that real quick modify menu left justified and then this will left justify the menu uh, oh, i haven't changed this one yet so it does have to pass that string in but then when it does there you go everything is left justified um, which again is important because this this bar needs to reach all the way across the menu if i didn't uh, run those methods to left or center justify the bar would only cover up just this portion of the words, uh, which I thought also kind of looked silly. So it, to me, it was important to make sure that it covered up the entire thing, uh, span the entire menu. Uh, so anyway, so there it is. Uh, so if you get a chance and you want to take a look at that, uh, feel free to. I am going to update this uh, the menu uh, utilities in here to match the one that's in here so that you don't have to pass so many strings back and forth. Uh, but anyways, uh, that is my menu class for C Sharp. So hopefully you, hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, if you end up using it, feel free to give me a shout out and let me know how it went. All right. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.